Welcome back to The Morning Brew. I'm Dan Mayfield from Albuquerque Business First with Amber oh, yeah. Hendren. And we're joined by a couple of friends, Dan Coney from the New Mexico Bureau of Geology and Mineral Resources and Colin McRoberts from the Open Space, Open Space Coordinator with Burnley County. And you guys are going to help us out and figure out what geomorphology means and how we can use that and in well, a million ways. But what, first of all, is geomorphology, if you can... Explain I'll take that, that. question. Oh, perfect. I'm a geomorphologist. Uh, a geomorphology is Can you simply. Get a degree in that? Is that like a thing that? Well, officially, I got a degree in geology, but okay. uh, in my graduate studies, I, I, I specialize in geomorphology. And geomorphology is the study of the Earth's surface, particularly the landforms on the surface, and how sur uh, Earth's processes like erosion and climate might affect those landforms. So uh, we're interested in uh, coming Sunday uh, in the in the landforms created by the Rio Grande River, mm -hmm. or the Rio Grande. <laughs> um, so we'll look at uh, like bar forms within the wind, uh, river and channels where the water flows down. And also talk about the, how over the long geologic scales, uh, the river has carved this big valley uh, that's now the Rio Grande Valley where Albuquerque the, rests today. The valley we're in right now. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. the river didn't have the path it has now. Yeah, interestingly, the river over millions of years has been in a lot of different locations. For example, about three or five million years ago, it was way by San uh, Arwantabo Avenue and laid down all this nice sand and gravel, which forms a really nice aquifer mm. or, where the groundwater comes from for the city. Very So cool. what causes this shift uh, through time? A number of things, but that shift caused... And such, it seems like there's such a slow flow of water, but it's still, yeah. it's still enough to things, create this change. Yeah, things like in that case, what caused the shift was that there's a fault lines by the mountains there, uh -huh. and the whole valley floor tilted to the east. So the river kind of slid down oh. toward the mountains oh. because no of that high rate of faulting, which was accompanied by earthquakes. So oh. how many millions, millions of years? Of years. <laughs> I was going to say, how That's many like millions of years That's like two to five million years ago. And since that time, the rate of tilting has decreased. Before the, tramway was a dirt road. Before Even before that. Dirt road. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but since then, the river has slowly made its way back and also cut down, making this river valley. Oh, very cool. Right, so, so how Colleen, do we use geomorphology? Well, um, I have to tell you, I've had friends visiting me in town from um, Washington, D.C., and I've been driving them around the state, and they have been awestruck by the, the landforms and the landscape here in New Mexico, and it really is so enchanting. So this Sunday's workshop, which will be free to the public, is an opportunity to try to understand what does make this, you know, uh, this beautiful place so incredible through the geology, but we'll, we will be focusing on the river. Um, but if you live in Albuquerque, understanding what shapes the river and why it looks the way it does today, I think is just very cool. And we have this wonderful partnership with the Bureau of New Mexico Geology, and they are able to really bring these very complex processes down to the layman's term. So if this sounds like a complicated topic, people should still come out, they should learn about the river, and then they can boast to their friends all their new knowledge. Exactly. Awesome. awesome. Which we're going to do today. Uh, no doubt. Geomorphologists. I know. We, we spoke with geomorphologists. <laughs> <laughs> we we for the geomorphologists day. on the show. <laughs> we also learned about augmented reality. <laughs> and, <laughs> and mint juleps. But that's <laughs> <laughs> Very well rounded. Very well rounded, well -rounded show. show, absolutely. But, so cool. And the river's been dammed for mm -hmm. uh, several decades now. What did that do to how the water flow works and how it changes, how the river even, I think even downstream now, that's changed quite a bit, didn't it? How, how, what, what did that dam do to the water flow now? It's done a lot of things. It's prevented big floods, but those big floods were pretty important for the original ecosystems along the river. Originally, hundreds of years ago, the river was really broad, mm. uh, wide. It didn't have as much trees because the river had these frequent floods that took, took off the trees. So they put the dam in, the flow is much more you know, regulated. But consequently, you have a lot more vegetation growing. And, the, and that vegetation has stabilized the banks of the river mm -hmm. and made a lot nearer where. Yeah. yeah. When um, we uh, developed Bekeke Open Space, which is where this activity is going to be taking place on Sunday, we really tried to uh, reestablish a mosaic of habitat because that's what used to exist when the river would meander. Yeah, we would have grasslands and mm -hmm. wetlands and a, a diverse ecosystem. And when we straightened it, we really stopped that flooding, which has affected our cottonwoods and all sorts of things along the river. Sure. So we have tried to reestablish those in areas where we can. And Bekeke is one of those places. So if people want to learn really about what the ecosystem would have looked like when it was more natural before a lot of human habitation and kind of straightening the river like it is today so it doesn't meander, 
which is good for us in the sense that we don't have to deal with massive flooding, mm -hmm. um, but it does have repercussions um, in the environment. And remind us real quick where the Bakeki is. It's in the North Valley. It's North Valley, Alameda, and Rio Grande Boulevard, right there on the corner. And again, most people know it from the Alameda parking lot where you can get to that wonderful trail all along the Bosque. But um, if you just tr walk a little bit east and then south, you're in this beautiful property. It's 27 acres. And like mm -hmm. I said, it's got the grasslands and the wetlands. And we're walking distance from the river. So on Sunday, that'll be a part of what we do. That's we'll great. actually take a trip to the river and, and look at it and see why it, that it looks the way glorious. it does. That's very Colleen cool. Colleen McRoberts and Dan Koning, thank you so much for being here. Geomorphology of the Rio Grande, May 4th this Sunday from 10 to 11.30 a.m. It's free. It's Yay. free. Oh, so it's free it'll be fun. <laughs> beautiful way to spend time out in nature. And learn all about the river. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it'll be great fun. Yeah. All right, well, we've got more coming up after the break. Don't go away.